Yeah. I still haven't matched except on the door for straight offer. Who's okay. playing that? Bill and Ram. Oh. Yeah. First game of the year. Who is it? Bill and Ram. Good. So excited. Thank you. Hello. I'm about to get loud. I just want, I don't want to scare anyone, but at the same time, I will. Okay. Okay. Hello. Welcome to our September general body meeting. I'm very excited about our speaker today, which I'll introduce shortly. Um, but first, we're going to try our always forever flawless four way test with online participation, and it will be perfect. And of all the things you think, say, and do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Perfect. All right. Thank you. That was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so everyone, um, welcome again. Um, for those of you who are new or visiting us for the first time, um, so the four-way tests are just guidelines that Rotarians use um, to guide them in all forms of relationships, so like French friendships and um, business relationships. And yeah, just a neat little guideline that we have. Um, so today's speaker um, is from Tampa Hope, Cynthia Jones Norrington, um, and it is continuing our series this of this year of discussing um, homelessness and all the the things that we haven't thought of before, solutions we haven't thought of before, um, and also just perspectives that might be completely new to some of us. Um, so I, I read about Santa Hope, especially during the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I was very interested to see what they're continuing to do. Um, so I am very excited. And here she is. <laughs> okay. Switch. Left and right. Oh, right to change. Right to change. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just going to take a breather for a minute. I just finished a resident meeting, so. And that was almost 100 of our clients. So uh, thank you uh, for welcoming me here, me here to speak with you about a wonderful program. I come to you by way of Chicago, Illinois. I ran the largest emergency shelter for the city of Chicago, which was over 400 beds. And I am so humbly grateful to speak to you today about a most wonderful program here in Tampa, which is actually new in so many words. Hillsboro Hope was created during a pandemic stage at that time. The success from that program um, taught the city of Tampa a lot, and they wanted to move forward with a permanent Tampa Hope, um, which is a street homeless shelter. So I am honored to be here before you and talk to you regarding um, what we offer at Tampa Hope. And I'm proud to be a steward of the mission. So. Um, Okay, I like that. <laughs> so Tampa Hope was uh, open December 13th of 2021. And we started our first clients of 25. From there, um, at the present date, we have over 100 tents and 100 people in those tents. And we are groundbreaking on 25 additional tents because we see such a need. So most of our clients come from the streets. They're chronically homeless. 
five, 10, 15 years. Now, it's just not a moral failing, but there are reasons and barriers to their homelessness. And we all know that one is concentrated poverty. We know two is mental health. We know that three is substance abuse. And four can be felony backgrounds, things of that nature that limit an individual from being productive in this society. So we have an outreach team that goes out and we only serve individuals in the city of Tampa. We only serve individuals 18 and up. Our youngest is 21 and our oldest is 81. So each client is brought in through our outreach team as we go out into the streets and find people that want to change their quality of life. These are all life-saving resources. So many have slept in the woods, streets, under the bridges, things of that nature. Here at Tampa Hope, these are life-saving resources. So for you and I, we know we can go home and put our key to the door. For many of our clients, they have a pad on the floor, they have showers, they have three square meals a day, clothing, hygiene products, anything that they need. Those are just their three basic human needs. We haven't talked about the other services that we put in place for them. As they're paired with the case manager, we identify what their needs are what their strengths are, what is it it's going to take to get them back and be sustainable to the point where when they transition out back to the community and house permanently, how can they stay sustainable? So remember that word throughout this presentation, sustainable. So they... So here is our community intake. As I said before, outreach goes out, bring those individuals in, and we do intakes on Tuesday. Sometimes it's 25, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it could be five. It depends on how many have successfully transitioned out and how many may have unsuccessfully transitioned out. You have to remember that individuals who have been chronically homeless for so long, it's very difficult for them to acclimate to structure, to rules and regulations, to having someone to tell them what to, what to do. Or it could be their mental health. Many cannot be confined in areas such as a tent or a community or a gated area. And we are secured by a gate or the substance abuse because they can't actively be a part of anything because they're self-medicating. So if they're a heroin addict, of course, it's going to be difficult to transition them to employment. So we try to engage them in services and refer them to areas like the Cove, Axe, uh, Grace Point, so that they can get ongoing services that will help them become productive, that they learn the tools and skills they'll need, and also they can get the medications and the monitoring and the therapists that they'll need to level out to be able to be productive. Many of our clients don't want to take medications, but they will, they'll take therapy. So that's great. For us, our environment is not a sober living environment. It's a drug-free campus. So we practice a harm reduction model. Does everybody know what that means? Right? Okay, so the, it's about teaching them how to use safely, but as they're doing so and seeing their life change and stabilize, that they're willing to possibly think about abstinence or they think about the possibility of being sober so that they can have the life-saving resources to transition out successfully. Okay. Volunteer help. Okay, so as we move forward in the progress and our case managers are working with our clients aggressively, we do intense target case management because we only have three 
to four months, give or take, given the housing market right now, it's put a hindrance on us trying to um, find housing for individuals that are on fixed incomes or individuals that are employed, they're making a livable wage of $15 an hour right now. And what does that look for for the city of Tampa, right? But we have uh, fascinating housing programs with inside Catholic charities that will allow for them to rapidly be rehoused into their own apartment and we pay their rent for 12 months. And they're followed by a case manager for the duration of that year. So that allows the client to save their money, but they're working with a case manager. So any of the services that they didn't acquire from Tampa Hope, they will be ongoing for that whole 12 months. So they're just not left out there by themselves, right? Now, this is one of the great parts of my job is that we can't do it without volunteers. One of the things that I've learned throughout my career in human services is that volunteers make up 50% of what we need. Whether they do drives, they come in and save the day, whether they become uh, junior staff, as we put it, um, but they're giving their time. So I ask that you remember the word what? Sustainable. As these are three other ones that I need for you to remember is to volunteer, to advocate, and to donate. And that's exactly what volunteers do for Tampa Hope. They not only give their time, but they also advocate for us. So when you're out and about and you meeting other people, and hey, I heard about this program, um, you know, and you're advocating for the homeless because they are a silent voice and volunteers become the voice of the homeless um, because without the volunteers, we would not be able to thrive as much as we do. Um, so impacts, of course, we've been open since 2013. I mean, I'm sorry, December 13th. Um, so the capacity is 125. Now you'll see the 300, right? So eventually we will be a capacity of 300. We will have cottages and the cottages look like, and these are the pictures of volunteers and our outreach events that we've gone to throughout the community. And that's how we bring uh, our guests into Tampa Hope. Um, let me go back one. So 300 of the 125, um, 300, 200 of those are going to be cottages. There are 64 square feet. Uh, there are 120 miles per hour, uh, can withstand 120 miles per hour hurricane wind. It sits on nine points. It's uh, a bed of shelving, heating, and air conditioning. So we will eventually have 200 of those cottages. So right now, we are considered outreach because we are in tents. But when the cottages come, we will be considered shelter. So we are uh, two programs in one. We go out, outreach, bring our individual in, individuals in, we stabilize them within the tents, and then they can transition into the cottages or they will be able to rapidly exit with the services that we provide back into the community. So since that time, December 13th, we have served 341 people. So it's a little over uh, nine months, give or take. 38 are chronically homeless. Now, the average length of stay has been 65 to 43 days. I say 65 because we've had to extend that stay because finding housing has been difficult. But our positive discharge at 79 and 31% has been good considering the market. 
We've had to seek private landlords because many of our clients have evictions under their belts, felonies under their belts. And so many landlords, property management companies, don't want to rent to our guests because, of course, homelessness has a bad name to it, right? But what they don't know behind the homelessness is that these are people, people that have fallen on bad times for whatever reason, and they are wanting to change their lives, and they need a second chance. So not all homeless people are violent or angry or I just go back to the violence because when people see homeless people, they want to cross over to the other side. They don't want to walk on the same side of the street because they're in fear that their lives could be in danger. Now, not to say, but the percentage, the percentages of individual homeless individuals hurting, hurting you are very low. Even those that have mental health, unless they're truly, truly manic and they have that real angry, mad person in their head, they, they stick to themselves. You'll see, see them mostly staring at the walls or staring at the mirrors. So the 79% can be a, a various factor. They, we believe in family reunification. So many may have went home permanently to stay with their family and friends. Many have gone on to permanent supportive housing meaning permanent housing with support with the case manager. Uh, we have some that have gone on to external agencies. Remember I talked about our senior population. We noticed that many of them were in need of ALFs, assistant living facilities, because they would not be able to self-care in their own apartment. Even if we connected them to homemaker services and things like that, that was going to be their permanent house. Um, and then I want to talk about the fact that being chronically homeless, you have chronic health care needs. Many of, we had many clients that came in with terminally ill cancer, with radiation and chemo. Well, we knew that they wouldn't be able to sustain an attempt, and we transitioned them to nursing home or assisted living facilities so that they can live out a better quality of life. Right. So this is the vision. You may not really can see it. So all of this is going to be the new building. And you're going to have showers and bathrooms and laundry rooms and a dining area. You're going to have office space, a canteen, a beauty shop, a bike shop. All the needs, it, we're going to be a little city. Yeah, so I kind of like that. Um, the Welcome Center is also going to house the administrative offices. We will have medical offices. Remember, I talked about the medical needs of the chronically homeless. We'll have those uh, that will be needing respite beds. Everybody know what respite beds are? Right, so many homeless individuals go through major surgeries but don't have a place to recuperate. We will have those facilities available to the homeless working with one of our community partners to ensure that they have the space to recover. And we'll have our computer learning centers, we have counseling offices and life skills rooms. And so we have a dynamic educational cohort that we're putting together and it's moving along with we, we're going to work around the construction. So uh, clients will still be able to get the things they need. So as I said before, the proposed facilities is the bathroom areas, the showers, the laundry, the kitchen, the dining, the dining room, the clothing, boutique, boutique and salon and canteen. It's really going to be really dynamic. Has anyone been physically out to Tampa Hope or you got to got to come so that you can see the before and so you can see the after. Uh, right now, it, it looks exactly like the first picture, all tents on a platform. This is the cottage. This is called the Hope Cottage. 
And right now we will house one person, but if needed and the capacity calls for it, we could double that uh, capacity. And they'll have power outlets so they can charge their phones, but they'll share the common areas. They'll share the, uh, the bathrooms and the laundry areas, but they'll have their own sleeping quarters. So naming naming opportunities, um, those that uh, purchase a cottage at various levels can have naming rights as well, right, Lou? Yep. Uh -huh. um, so one at 15000 one of those cottages costs $15,000. Wow, right? Um, so as you look through, uh, number two is 30,000, that's the protector of hope. 45,000 at three is the defender of hope. 60,000 at four is the champion of hope. 75,000 at five is the angel of hope. And above five is customized. That's Lou's area. <laughs> so I'll leave that to Lou. Um, and then as you move about the PowerPoint, you can see how this massive uh, construction is going to cost a lot of money. And so with that, what's the three? Volunteer, advocate, and donate. Exactly, exactly. Any questions so far? Okay. So each donor at these levels receives a bronze plaque and again, naming rights. Uh, building donors will receive large signs and large black letters that fix it in the exterior of the building. Um, and this is all due to donations that we're able to move forward with such a wonderful project. I think I could have covered everything. Any questions? Um, I had questions just going back to the outreach and how you um, get people's information. So you mentioned the age minimum. Um, so what happens if someone has like children, like their own kids? Right. Or so we have a great referral process that we do for our outreach team. So when they call in or we see someone on the street, we can give them various referrals for family shelters. Now, Catholic Charity has over 46 programs, give or take. We have five shelters, but our family shelter is in Pasco. But in Tampa, we have a few like Metropolitan Ministries, Downing Family Services, um, even um, I want to say, yeah, you know, Rose Manor is not with Tampa Crossroad, but there are a couple of others in Brandon, but we give them firm referrals to those shelters. Right now, shelters are at capacity. There are not any shelters for individuals at this time, and we're already seeing our waiting list um, extend beyond our imagination, and we're trying uh, diligently to bring all those individuals in. So we work with community partners like Tampa, the City of Tampa Outreach, uh, Tampa Police Department, and then we have the Cove and Axe, and we have Northside Housing, Bay Care. Uh, so we partner with them and we allocate to them so many tents a week or they'll send in their referrals. Like for example, somebody is getting ready to get out of residential and have no place to go. So having those community partners helps us provide services for our guests at Tampa Hope, but also allowing for another individual to transcend to another level of care. So the outreach is four criteria that we can't take. We can't take sex offenders. We can't take someone that is in full blown psychosis. We can't take someone that's on oxygen and we can't take a person that can't self care or self, can't self propel their own wheelchair. Because we are so widespread, everything we have at Temple Hope is modular. 
Everything is portable from our bathrooms to our laundry to our showers. And they must be able to move about in the environment and handle the day-to-day -day activities. So if they can't do those four things, we give them a firm referral to another facility. Um, I was curious, since you said that this came about uh, during the pandemic, just like what you've noticed over the past two years and how like homelessness is changing. Uh, we're seeing such a dynamic increase in senior population homelessness. Um, one, because they cannot afford the rents or they've been evicted. You got to remember that during COVID and even though they had the mandate that you could not evict people during the COVID time and landlords were receiving rental assistance, well, they were still doing it. And even after the pandemic, a lot of people started to get evicted and landlords did not want to take the remaining portions of the rental assistance to bring them up to date. So individuals end up getting evictions on their records. And that caused a, a quite an increase. And then, of course, uh, people made a conscious decision that, okay, I'm not going back to work. <laughs> but they also wanted a livable wage. Uh, we found that a lot of people could not afford rent on $12 an hour. Even a single mother with four children, she would not be able to. So are we seeing not only the sing single individual becoming homeless, but we're also seeing families being homeless, mothers and children, high increases. But the senior population, very much so, even higher. And even when the pandemic was occurring, those that had mental health was face-to-face -face seeing therapists and medication mo monitoring, that dropped. So we start to see an increase. And then, of course, those that um, are suffering from the disease of alcohol and substance abuse, they just started self-medicating. And so they just dropped off the face of the earth, and many just wanted to live off the grid. And so when they did that, it just caused a higher increase of homelessness. Now, many homeless, some don't want services because they don't want to conform to the rules and regulations. They don't want to have to give up their drugs and alcohol. And they try desperately to try to come into shelter, but we have to send them to another level of care because they need medical detox. We can't provide that level of care within Tampa Hope but we can provide firm referrals. We can provide, if you go and take care of everything you need regarding your substance abuse, then you can come back. There's a tent for you. So we don't close that door of opportunity and that seed of hope for them. We just need to stabilize. And that's another word I want you to remember. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, any other questions? Yes. Uh, how long does it take to build whether the uh, the two units, the tent, as well as the? Oh, funny you should say that. I, we didn't bring that flyer, did we, Lou? September seventeenth. You can put this down in your calendars. Uh, we're 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 asking for volunteers September seventeenth at eight a.m. to build the new platforms for the tents. Um, so we can build twenty five in a day. If we have enough volunteers, yeah. So, say, so what's the bottleneck for materials and volunteers as well? Uh, the volunteers and the materials. Yeah, the tents cost, the, the tents are as little as $100 a tent, as much as $300 a tent. Uh, Cynthia can tell you the lifetime of a tent 60 days because they're not meant to be out 24 7. Yeah. And so, it gets really pricey. Uh, we try to get with Coleman and see if they do a deal with us and they're not interested. Uh, so tents are expensive, the wood platforms are expensive. It's a combination of everything. Nonprofit, we have all resources we don't have enough people. So we, we really thrive as Cynthia said on the community getting involved. We can't be successful without the community community participating. So the volunteers, you can make it, you have your course drill, 
come on out. According to 17, we'll build a platform. The creek dump, they got other people there, our VC is all people there, the creek dump. It's just drilling, 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 making 25. Uh, but you feel good about what you do, and then the tent, putting the tent up isn't very difficult, unless you're challenged like I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, oh, everything's a yeah. backward. But uh, the cottages are another place. Now, that takes, you got to learn how to put those old cottages up. And uh, those are expensive, and we can't put those in until they have electricity right. on site. So October 1st, we're breaking ground. We're going to start digging the trenches to lay the electricity for the cottages. And um, then we're going to break ground on the new building. Um, so, again, we're going to be inundated with construction all around us. This is, this is such a city within a city that the Tampa Electric, we're going to have our own power source. Uh, so that if we want to increase in capacity one day, we we will have the power to do so. What are the hours? So the nine seventeen of that that's eight till question mark. Or? Yeah, question mark. We usually in by the end of day, maybe six. And yeah. The tenth uh, one of it, eight o'clock start. Well, that's just that's construction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tim one is just construction, but the actual event where we really need hands on is sept, uh, September 17th. Can I ask a question? Who here, raise your hand if you're a creative person. What do they call that, right brain? Who's creative here? Yeah. Who's like, okay, who's rational, a rational and number person? Okay. So we deal with both of them. Cynthia's intelligence. Creative, but she's also good with the numbers, but she's very creative. I'm not creative, I'm the rational. <laughs> so, one argument you saw the big, huge number she shared with you. You know, I don't know where you are in stage of your, your business life, probably not where you can afford some of that stuff, but one never knows. But you may know people who do. And then the other thing is, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be one person, it can be a whole group of people come together to buy a cottage. 15 people, $1,000 a piece, you have a cottage, name it. Uh, you can do it over five years. The other thing for those that are up for sake, a shelter like this, Cynthia and her team run this shelter, it costs between two to three thousand dollars per person per year to run it. That seems like a lot, but it isn't. It's less than ten bucks a day. What is the cost of incarcerating a prisoner? It varies. In the state of California, it's over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right? In a federal prison, it's thirty-five thousand dollars a year. Almost 100 bucks a day. Uh, in the state of Florida, we're a little cheaper. Maybe we don't feed them as well. I don't know. But it's more like uh, $20,000 a year. So this is a cheap date for people that otherwise, as you mentioned, a lot of our fellows might go back because we're recidivists and high and go back to that population. It's a very expensive way to treat people. And as Cynthia said, one of our main partners will be daycare. They'll eventually be on site where they can treat not just the rest of the care patients, but all the people that are there provide some basic services. So when you talk to people, we really do ask you to advocate, you know, there's a crazy thing. People just care about helping people, and we love that. There's also the rational side, and this is a cheap date that's all said and done. So anything you can do to help make people aware, we appreciate it. That's what we need. We have um, the med students from USF. They come out every first and third Saturday and offer medical services to our clients who have not yet acquired medical insurance because many don't have it or m many have not had it in a very long time. So we have them coming out. And then we also have Tampa Health Foundation. Their team comes out every Friday and signs our individuals up for health care with Hillsborough County. Um, so it really makes a, a difference. For me, health care means a lot um, because we see uh, the devastation of the lack of. And do we see deaths? Yes. Could they have been preventable? Yes. But because there was not ongoing, care um it got to uh to a point where it became fatal 
I just took you back to the tents because uh, Lou talked about the Coleman tents. And of course, uh, you know, doing our analysis when we were at Hillsborough County, the, the tents were only up for three to four months. What we didn't anticipate is having the direct sunlight and the concrete ground, the, the material literally became crepe paper. So we start to see uh, the life expectancy of this tent dwindling. So we found a three seasonal tent um, that's much more expensive, over $300. Right now it's going into its sixth, no, third, third month. Yeah, Second month. month. It's, go it's going into its third month and we have not seen no leaks, no nothing, no rips, no tears. No bears, no nothing. Yeah. We got chickens out there too. You know, for a city girl, that's like, wow. <laughs> you know, it's like, look at that raccoon, Miss Cynthia. I was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, um, yeah. I, I love Florida, but yeah. <laughs> um, so, Tampa Hope is one of the most amazing models that I've ever worked with before when I. Uh, left Chicago, we were doing pets, partners, and possessions. Many of the homeless individuals didn't want to come into shelter because they couldn't bring their pets, they couldn't bring their partners, and they couldn't bring their possessions. So that was a new model that came out of Seattle that I was working on. But when I uh, was asked to lead this charge, I was so excited. I mean, the... Um, the idea that we can house individuals in tents um, and then at the same time give them the life-saving resources they need, supportive services they need to help them transition. What I learned in Florida is that, um, of course, being in a big city, um, you don't have as many resources. So it's taxing on our case managers to find resources to assist our clients. So when we come across volunteers and they have resources, it helps us even more. And we just got another laundry, uh, no, a shower unit. So now we'll have eight for women and eight for men. Um, so we're excited about that. Who gets excited about a shower trailer but me <laughs> i tell you but we we're excited that this model has taken a foot and we're seeing how many are looking at how can they be a part of tampa hole now one of the things i want to say is remember we can only take residents from the city of tampa because hillsborough county they did not see the need for this type of model and shelter program. So Hillsboro sheriffs can't bring anyone into Tampa Hope. Only Tampa Police Department can. And you have to be living in the city of Tampa for at least three to six months. So do we get a lot of calls from people just got off the bus? Yes. And we have to refer them. So Tampa Hope is an infant, and our brother, Pinellas Hope, is a 15-year-old teenager. So they have more phases than we do. However, they sit on more land than we do. We sit on about six acres. Any other questions? And that's how it looks from... That was that was uh, Hillsboro. I, yeah, yeah. We have one. It's a drone. Yeah. So, any questions? Any other questions? I have some cards here at the table. If you are interested in individually donating your time, volunteering in Tampa Hope, by all means, uh, please give me a call. Or if you want to come as a group, that would be even wonderful. So what was the first word I wanted you to remember? What was the second? Yes. And the third? 
and have a baby. Next. Have a baby. And what's one more? Judge the mess. Let's start with the mess. Yes. <laughs> I just can't remember what it is. <laughs> Anybody? Did I say stabilize? Yeah. Stabilize. <laughs> I want you to remember that always as you move about your day, your week, your month, um, and you see an individual that's out there, know that there are always circumstances behind their homelessness, that they're just not a lazy bomb and don't want to work, that there are forces behind things that we don't even understand, right? So thank you for allowing me to speak to you today, and I greatly appreciate it, and I'm humbly grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, work for me too. Okay. So um, let me go through announcements really quickly. Um, this was our from this past Sunday. I don't remember, but our last volunteer event, and we went to the park, just to the park, um, and just cleaned up some trash and had a good time. Um, our next cleanup is actually September 17th, the same day. <laughs> um, but as I put it on the Facebook status, you now have two choices. No excuses to not do something September 17th. So you can join us at the cleanup, um, the coastal cleanup, or you can also um, go to Tampa Hope. Um, yeah, and we'll be at the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Um, our next social is Laser Tag. Uh, we don't have to book ahead, so by all means, decide last minute if you would like to okay. go. Uh, no pressure, but just join us if you'd like. Um, remember our annual camping trip. I'm going to keep reminding you all so that no one forgets. Um, and I believe John has, um, he's not online right now, but he does have an event out there. So any questions, direct them to the Facebook event for that. Um, and then I forgot to tell. Lauren to add it to a newsletter. But we do have a district cruise this year. Um, I believe it's a cause of mouth. <laughs> and um, there's, that's just the prices to get you guys, give you guys an idea of what they're gonna what's gonna be. But essentially um, they've reserved rooms um, with different price ranges to make it a bit more affordable. Um, and they are working on uh, setting up a volunteer event. They haven't announced what it is yet because it's not settled, but there will be about they want to have a volunteer event when you um, get off uh, the ship. And when is the group? Yeah. It's next year. It's yeah, like it's in March. Oh, yeah, it's in March. I believe it's towards the end. I'll have Lauren right. add it to the next well, newsletter. Last time it was like the, it was towards end of the month, early uh, April. Yeah, yeah. I think it's similar to that. I'll have Lauren add it to the newsletter. I just found this in my email today, and I was like, let me mention it now because some deadlines are coming up. Yeah, right. could I say that's? Yeah, good thing you're mentioning it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to make this decision. March, March 27th to April 1st. There you go. Happy birthday. Yeah, oh, well, birthday. Birthday. <laughs> yeah I'll probably be at a wedding. Birthday birthday. Birthday. <laughs> yeah. oh, I thought you had a question. Yeah. Never mind. I guess a Monday to um, Saturday. Okay. So that's actually it for now, so I'll really quickly with that. Um, but Matt, you were at the USF Tampa meeting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how that was? Yeah, so uh, there's really good turnout. There's 84 students that my time. 25 of them were returning inducted members. Wow. Uh, they have a whole slew of volunteer opportunities so far for the first six weeks. They do a lot with Feeding Tampa Bay. I was, uh, yeah, Feeding Tampa Bay. So uh, looking at seeing if we can maybe partner with them. They usually do like on a Friday, so it might be difficult, but if you're taking a day off, that might work. Um, there's also the uh, We Built Community Garden that they go to. I think it's the first Friday of every month. And to help pass out food. So I can forward along the slides with Joseph, but they meet every other Tuesday. Uh, they're now doing 5.30 to, or 5.45 to 7. 
Yeah, it's earlier this year, right? The last year. Um, and then does anyone go to the Interact meeting? Next week. Do you want to tell us about it? I mean, we they just inducted their new members, so that just happened last month. That's not there for So I guess this is like the first real meeting for the new members there. We're going to kind of get started with the school year. So kind of excited. It should be a lot of fun. It's next Monday? Yeah, it will be Labor Day was this week. So. Right, then move it. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, well, that's all we've got for today. Um, thank you so much for you guys coming out. Again, um, announcement. Hi, Andre. What, what question? I think he wants to make an announcement. Birthdays. Do you have the birthdays on hand? Uh, let me see. The <laughs> September birthday. John, John. He's not here. He's not here, so. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, has a birthday. <laughs> What, Andre? Yeah. Liz Roach has a birthday. Oh, yeah, Liz has a birthday. Oh, we'll send her a happy birthday through Facebook. Okay. She's not here. All right. Oh, oh and Jeff has a birthday. What the? He's not yeah. here. Yeah. He's not here. I thought I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell him. That. Anyway, um, that's all for today. Um, do you are you guys? I know the weather doesn't look great. Are you guys interested in walking over for dinner, or do you just rather go home tonight? On the radar, I could if, if it's not pouring out there, I'd yeah, I have an umbrella in my consider car. walking like over. Somewhere. <laughs> okay. Andre bought me a new umbrella last week, so I have two umbrellas. <laughs> all right. Well, we figured that out. I will. Sure. Oh no, no, the radar doesn't really look that. Yeah, I don't bad. think it's really gonna help. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I will officially arrange chances. Y'all may leave or join us for uh, dinner. <laughs> also, remember, she has information. Do you guys want to more yeah. information? Sort of what I would gather too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm sure it's not quite a bit of a shock to you, but I'm working in the local newsroom. So, I'll just be sure. Yeah, that's my thing.